Hi, this is Susan from actempire.com. Today I want to go over a problem that involves the method of moments as well as value at risk. Before I get started, I want to thank everyone for your input and suggestions on our previous video. Some of you mentioned that it would be nice to have um, the problem statement sort of float at the top as we go through the calculations. Unfortunately, we don't know how to make good use of our space if we were to do that, so instead, I want to remind you that you can go down to the info bar here in the video, find that link to a PDF which contains the bare bones of everything I'm going through right now as well as the problem statement. So if you print that out ahead of time and take it out in front of you, you can take notes directly on the page um, and you'll also have the problem with you as we go through the steps of the calculations. So please do keep those feedback um, suggestions coming because we're always looking for ways to improve and do a better job here of presenting these video tutorials. Let's get started. So this is the problem. We've got data for a large insured comprising of the number of claims and the average claim size per year for three years. And assuming that there's some amount of inflation and assuming that we want to model our claim size with a Weibull distribution with parameters tau equals 2 and some unknown theta, we want to be able to calculate a value at risk at the 99th percentile for the claim size distribution in year 4, where theta is going to be estimated using the method of moments. Okay, so keywords here, um, to me, the biggest important keywords here are year 4, really, because that tells us that we need to apply an appropriate amount of inflation to consider everything on the basis of year four dollars when we calculate our um, theta as well as our value at risk. So bear that in mind. Here are our, are our A, B, C, D, and E choices for the answer and some extra gamma values in case these come up in our calculation. And as you know, we can calculate gamma values for most of the positive integers, but we can't calculate gamma of non-integers with our calculators. So usually if you do need a number like that on the exam, it will be provided to you. So we're going to proceed using a four-step method. The first step is that we want to calculate a grand total over the three years, the total claim size adjusted for inflation, again, in year four dollars. Step two, we want to calculate the average claim size. So simply dividing the grand total by the number of claims, that's essentially what it is. Step three, calculate the method of moments estimate for theta. And year four, we then calculate the value at risk using the values that we've got from, uh, or using the theta hat that we get from step three. Step one. This first step involves calculating firstly the yearly totals. So in the second column here, we have count times average claim size. And that gives us a total claim size for that year. Next, we want to apply a suitable inflation factor for each year. Let's start at the bottom here. So all the dollars paid out in year three have had one year for inflation to occur. So our inflation factor will simply be 1 plus 8% or 1.08. Now going back a year to year two, we now have two years of inflation, right? We have inflation going from year two to year three, and then we have inflation going from year three to year four. So our inflation factor here is 1.08 raised to the second power. And similarly, the same logic applies for the, the 1.08 raised to the third power here. Now, we simply multiply our unadjusted totals by the inflation factor to get our adjusted total claim sizes per year. Then we want to uh, sum the last column to get the grand total of claim amounts over the three years. That gets us this 4.7 million. Next, we want to calculate the average claim size over the three years. So we take the value that we got in the previous slide, 
the 4.7 million, and we divide by the total number of claims. So this 420 is actually the 100 plus 150 plus 170 that we have in the different years. That gives us an approximately $11,000 in average claim size. Step three, now we're ready to move on to the method of moments estimation part of it. So from the equation sheet, we're pulling out this following formula for a Weibull distribution. And this is the mean or the expectation, the expected value. As you know, with the method of moments, what we do is basically match our empirical moments to the theoretical moments. And because here we only need to estimate one parameter theta, since tau is already given to us, we only need to look at matching the first moment or the, the mean. So what we have on the right-hand side is, is exactly our theoretical moment, and on the left-hand side, what we're going to do is fill in our empirical moment, which is our average, the 11,000. So this is where we end up having a gamma of 1 plus 1 over tau. If tau is 2, then we have a gamma function of 1.5 here. And we get that 0.89 from the first uh, slide. So now solving for theta, we have a theta hat equals to about $12,628. That is our estimate for theta. Now we're ready to calculate the value at risk. Value at risk is also given on the equation sheet in close form. So P here will be 0.99, right, because we're interested in the 99th percentile value at risk. The theta here will be taken from the previous slide. It'll be our method of moments estimate. And tau will simply be 2 because that's given to us. So simply plugging things in, we get that our value at risk at the 99th percentile is $27,099, sorry, $27,099 and 30 cents. That's quite a mouthful. And so that's closest to D, and that's our final answer. So I hope you guys found this helpful, and as always, please do give us any feedback that you might have. You can make a comment here on our website, and you can always go to our website at actempire.com to look at some of the sample chapters we have up from our manual or make a purchase if you're interested in getting the whole thing. Um, please let us know if you have any other questions, any thoughts for future tutorials, any ideas in general. We're always happy to listen. So thanks for watching and have a good day.